वेलकम 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 एवरी वन टू डे नंबर एटीन टूडे इट्स improve your openings with sagar and we are going to look at the italian gambits this is going to be a very interesting lecture because many of the openings that you guys play are going to be discussed today so <clears throat> i will need a lot of inputs from all of you uh welcome to all those who are uh already there on the live stream you know I, of late i've got this feeling that i think i should i should start playing chess again because i'm working so much on this opening series there are so many openings that i haven't played uh, earlier so the openings which i have played naturally i have lot of a uh, lot of games in it and i can discuss them but like today's session i have hardly any games in that so i'm researching from the morning doing some analysis and i started to think maybe i was not working as hard when i was actually playing chess so for all the people who are very much curious as to what is the meaning of today's thumbnail <laughs> it's nothing nothing spectacular or anything of that sort uh just that you know i i went to bihar uh, once for a chess tournament uh, and um it was national premier and over there we sat in a rickshaw uh, cycle rickshaw i think very few places now in india and the world have cycle rickshaws where humans are pedaling them and uh, they take you to different places and uh, yeah just meeting different kinds of people uh, on the street the guy was very old but you know for him this was his source of livelihood it was nice it was nice to interact with him to talk with him on the journey and somehow i just kept this thumbnail you know always keeping professional thumbnails is no fun so sometimes just something interesting okay uh <clears throat> yeah yeah let's see who are there online s murugan like always good afternoon murugan who else rachit shah vijay yala podaros very tough surname kartik ashok no vidit is not for this episode but vidit will uh, come maybe once more as he said for something else uh, in the future uh, nikhil welcome who else who else ilam parthi welcome shriyana malya nihilesh कुशल चेस प्रणव जुजारे वेरी नाइस मयूर गोंदेकर ग्रेट टू सी ऑल ऑफ यू सो टूडे सेशन एज आई मैं इज गोइंग टू डील विथ इटालियन गैम्बिट्स एंड आई विल नीड अ लॉट ऑफ इनपुट्स फ्रॉम योर एंड लाइक यू कैन आस्क मी क्वेश्चन एज टू वाई नॉट दिस मू आई विल बी आस्किंग यू क्वेश्चन सो ई फोर ई फाइव नाइट एफ थ्री नाइट सी सिक्स एंड नाउ bishop to c4 we are going to look at that and yesterday we saw vidit who who showed us a game uh, against vei which went uh, something like this is everything okay yeah okay so basically uh, this was what vidit discussed yesterday and we are going to look at that uh tomorrow i think all the slow lines which are with d3 and c3 these are all going to be covered tomorrow you know like d3 c3 uh in any move order what we are going to look today are aggressive attacking options and uh, i was actually thinking a lot whether i should recommend knight f6 here or bishop c5 and uh, well both moves have their upsides and downsides for example if you play knight f6 you have to prepare for knight g5 lines uh and uh if you play bishop c5 then you have to prepare for b4 line so both sides both lines have their upsides and downsides so but i have decided that we will discuss bishop to c5 uh, and we will 
be ready for the events gambit so today i'm going to talk to you about the events gambit as well traxler okay basically i think traxler will come if you go knight g5 and bishop c5 yeah this way but i would i would like to go with uh, bishop c5 so maybe that avoids the traxler systems you know some lines will be avoided some lines will be discussed okay yeah now in this position let's look at the options i think the main options are c3 with the idea of d4 because we are looking at aggressive lines today the other one is c castles with the idea of d4 uh one is direct d4 and the last one is b4 okay so these are all the things that we are going to look at just moving back there is also the scotch gambit i think a lot of players play it with bishop c4 here and uh, you must have seen this also happening in a lot of your games uh here there are there is basically there are two ways to to deal with scotch gambit hmm my recommendation is knight f6 now the reason why i recommend this is because of if let's say you play bishop c5 i'm a little bit worried about castles you know this line i don't know uh how strong or how good it is um uh, Ah yeah 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 here i i think we can go d6 basically so so actually c bishop c5 no the the move which i was afraid of was knight f6 e5 and now d5 and e into f6 this is the max lange attack okay we'll come to it d into c4 and now uh, f g7 is one move rook e1 check bishop e6 f g7 rook g8 this is another line which we should look at okay so so just let's let's go from the from the beginning uh, and try to focus a bit and get the move order right but before that let me see if you have any questions here uh uroso gambit i think uh, e4 e5 bishop c4 knight f6 d4 okay that's interesting i'll keep this in mind that we should look at this knight f6 and d4 but i think uh, e into d4 looks okay here and maybe the main move here of of the uroso is uh, knight f3 and then if we play uh, knight c6 kind of transposes into what we want to play anyway yeah so doesn't look uh yeah bishop c5 is all, uh, there is c3 also yeah <coughs> okay let's let's start from the beginning so knight f3 knight c6 and now first of all let's focus on the evans gambit okay bishop c4 bishop c5 and b4 okay this is what we will look at now what do you guys would like to do here would you like to take the pawn or would you like to move back black to play what do you play yes kumar nandish i think ivan's gambit is a pretty good opening so if you if you want to play it is not a bad bad line to to look at uh, but i think black with some preparation like we are going to see here uh, we will be able to overcome the problems uh, and also italian is a very flexible opening white can play c3 and d3 in a positional way or he can play all these gambit lines with d4 b4 so it's both it can be a positional as well as an aggressive system okay so as everyone says let's take on b4 so let's take the pawn and now c3 and ivan's gambit was basically formulated uh with the idea that you give up a pawn and then you play c3 you play d4 
and you quickly gain the center actually there is a very very famous game of bobby fisher uh, in the evans gambit if i can find it i would like to show you this one uh, let's see if i can find fisher's game in the evans gambit he managed to beat quite a few players using this system and yeah there are many games but I'm trying to look at the games of Robert James Fisher. I don't know. There was one famous game of Fisher. Maybe I'll I'll have a look at it and and show you later. But the the main plan is to play Bishop A5 now for Black. <coughs> uh, Murugan says it's Agad Mater's favorite opening yeah not a bad opening to have it as your favorite one d4 capturing the center and here i recommend the move uh, d6 although e into d4 is much more popular and then white will castle and then if you get too greedy and take another pawn then i think after queen b3 you are having a very difficult time first of all f7 is hanging secondly bishop can move to a3 uh, overall, this is very, very dangerous, you know, to play such systems. So, therefore, we are not going to get greedy here. We are just going to play d6 in this position. Okay, very solid and uh, steady. And now, uh, I think the main move is queen to b3, attacking this pawn on f7. Now think about this position for a bit and tell me what would you play here as black. Black to move. We are going to follow a very talented youngster from Indian chess and what he played here. We are not going to... Uh, We're not going to take take risky decisions against the Ivan's gambit. Just solid, solid chess. Tanmay Das says Fisher versus Fine. Okay. Alan K. Thomas, welcome. Alan, I'm seeing you after a long time. Queen E7 is most of the people are saying Queen E7. I believe that queen e7 is a mistake because of a very simple reason uh, that here, <coughs> I mean, white will go d5 and the problem being that now uh, the threat is if the knight moves, you check and you win the bishop. So you may have to go knight d4 and then after uh, knight into d4. C, uh, e into d4 now i can't play queen a4 check because after bishop d7 and queen into a5 there is queen takes e4 check uh it could be possible but i think castles is just very strong and this is exactly the kind of position which we are avoiding that's the reason why instead of queen e7 recommended is queen to d7 you know this is the best move uh, you are after d5 you just want to move the knight and there are no more checks coming in and picking up this bishop okay so that's the reason why queen d7 is a good move <clears throat> now after queen d7 the game which i was quoting was between eltad safarli who is playing with the white pieces and black is nihal sarin this happened very recently and I think uh, it was an excellent game. Now the main move here is D into E5. One move which you should definitely avoid here in such positions is taking back the pawn. You know, if you take back the pawn, white quickly castles, brings his rook to D1, puts pressure down here, develops his bishop to A3, puts pressure down this diagonal. It's a lot of problems that you are facing. So that's the reason why. <clears throat> so 
so that's the reason why here bishop b6 is a good move now can anyone tell me what is the idea between uh, of bishop b6 move what's the idea here black to move Yeah, this happened in the World Cup. What should black play here? Uh, what's the idea of black uh, after the move bishop b6? Yes, very good. Anudeep, Anup, Rudolf, Kobl. Uh, chess variation no uh, ilam party yes very nice knight a5 is the main idea you know you want to play knight a5 and pick up this bishop and actually it's not so easy for for white to prevent this after d into e5 <coughs> i think uh, a way to continue if you go ed6 then knight a5 and i already like black's position uh let's say you you play queen b5 i take you take and i play queen into d6 and next move uh maybe i'll i'll just play knight d7 move away my queen perhaps bishop e6 attacking your queen and castle it should be uh, it's a better position for black okay so ed6 is not so good Bishop b5 is another move here, just trying to pin the knight. But I think after a6, bishop a4, ng e7, uh, say ed, queen d6, and this like for example say bishops, bishop a3, I can just move my queen away from, from here like even bishop c5 is fine here just blocking. But I can even play queen to g6 and um, castle next. And I think uh, bishop e6 may come in. Black is doing completely fine. Yeah, black is better in this position. So that's why taking d into e5 may not be a good idea. So in the game, Eltaj played castles here and uh, Nihal did the same thing which we discussed. He brought his bishop back to b6. It's very important to, to play this move to threaten this uh, knight a5. Now if you play something like let's say queen c2, then I, I can very well win a pawn here. You know like ed4, uh, cd4 knight d4 knight d4 bishop d4 and i'm i'm pretty solid now i next move i can play knight to f6 and just castle so that's the reason why uh knight bd2 was played here and now the the point being that uh, if ed4 is played here which seems like a possible move not many many games have continued uh, in this way ed4 but it seems quite possible you can think about it uh, although nihal went knight a5 which is nice uh, queen c2 was played knight into c4 knight into c4 this is this is one way to to play uh, in this but what nihal did was instead of taking on c4 uh, i think his opponent here played queen to b1 and uh, nihal went knight to e7 i like this i like this move because after d into e5 he didn't really care for the pawn he just castled and I think black has already uh, survived the, the worst in this opening. You know, he has bishop b5, c6 was played, then bishop d3. And now rook d8 came. 
and slowly and steadily nihal nihal unraveled in this position and he managed to get an advantage like uh, here knight into c4 knight g6 uh, and now here rook d1 was played when after queen g4 i think black is doing very well black's idea is now to play queen h5 maybe threaten bishop g4 knight e5 and this looks good okay guys do you have any question against the against um, the ivan's gambit so what we are going to do is we are going to take the pawn we're going to move our bishop back to e a5 when he goes d4 you're going to play d6 when he goes queen b3 you just defend it with queen d7 not queen e7 because of d5 but just queen uh, d7 okay we, we'll we'll look at nakmanson gambit okay everyone wants to look at nakmanson we'll look at it uh, and now my point is that i will play bishop b6 threatening knight a5 put these two pieces in an uncomfortable situation and uh, then i'll go knight e7 and castle and sometimes when white takes on e5 don't bother recapturing because when you recapture it opens the d file and it also opens the the a3 f8 diagonal what you should do is you should simply develop say knight e7 uh, by the way make sure that f7 is not hanging you can go knight f6 at that point or you can go knight f5 eliminate the bishop and then knight e7 and you get a decent position okay that's that's my recommendation uh anirudh naganur uh says yeah even even bishop e7 is an option it's it's uh, not at all bad like bishop e7 here d4 and then uh, there are many moves here knight a5 being the main move it's possible to play uh, i think uh, there are these famous games i think there is Carlsen who's played it against Sujirov. There is Kasparov who's played it against Anand. So these are all very nice and interesting games you can look at. I just decided to, to recommend something which was extremely solid. The computers like it uh, after Bishop A5, D4, D6. And also Nihal playing it means it's, it's a pretty decent line. Okay. Uh, even the problem with bishop c5 going back is that d4 comes with a tempo. So that's the reason why I'm not, I'm going bishop a5, then bishop b6 and so on. Okay, so let's look at, uh, I think this is, that's what we saw with uh, Ivan's gambit. And you should check out the game. Uh, Nihal Sarin, uh, Eltad Safarli, Nihal Sarin, and look at some more games in this line to get a feel for it. Now, another line is d4. We are going to look at d4, and uh, as we have seen already, we are going to take on d4. And after knight d4, we had discussed bishop b4, check c3, bishop c5, if you remember against the scotch. Uh, but bishop c4 is the recommended option bishop c4 uh, for the scotch gambit if you're playing and here uh, i am not sure what i want to do um there are a couple of things first of all bishop c5 i think is a is perhaps a safer alternative here because if bishop c5 white can play two moves one is castles and another one is c3 okay now if your opponent plays the move c3 here then you can play knight to f6 and if he takes on d4 you can play bishop b4 check we'll come to this variation it's an interesting one uh, and if he plays to knight f6 e5 then you play d5 bishop b5 knight e4 cd4 bishop b6 this is again another line which we want to look at 
it's a, it's an interesting line we'll look at the game uh karyakin versus anand in this this system so the question is after bishop c5 what if he castles and the line which i am actually a little bit uh, afraid of is knight f6 and the move e5 i don't like this system because for uh, here the only logical move for black is to play d5 you know otherwise black is in trouble if you go knight g4 i'll play bishop f4 and and you are not doing so well with black so you play d5 now white takes dc and the move which uh, puts me under some worry is f into g7 very accurate rook g8 and now rook e1 check bishop e6 and now bg5 okay ng5 was considered for many years the main move against max lange this is the max lange attack but here queen d5 uh, gives black a very good position the line often goes in a crazy way which is knight c3 queen uh, f5 knight e4 and long castle and then you go sometimes i think even g4 is an option if i'm not mistaken here g4 is bad because of takes 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 knight c5 and rook g7 so not g4 but yeah i mean this position looks complicated but i think the main move which caused me a lot of worry when i was preparing was the move bishop g5 here i think if with white if you get a chance to play this system do play it it's interesting bishop e7 and now uh, to take here and if he takes with the queen then you take on d4 and i think uh, white has some edge here in this position so i i would recommend you not to get into this system of the max lange mm the reason why i'm not afraid of this is because uh for two reasons first of all i can go bishop c5 here and then after he castles i can start off with d6 and this is one one very uh nice way to play and you avoid all these gambits the other one is to actually play knight f6 here and then after e5 to play d5 this is uh, again uh, one of the main lines and also if you play castles then knight into e4 and here i think comes the nakmanson gambit with knight to c3 that's what yesterday vidit also explained and i think uh, you shouldn't be too greedy and taking with the pawn when after bishop f7 king f7 queen d5 you may have to play a very dangerous move like king f6 although black may be better here it's a risky way to play so that's the reason why what i recommend is to take knight into c3 pawn into c3 and d5 when after rook e1 bishop e7 mm, just castle next move and black is doing very very well this position is around equal okay so uh i don't see why nakmanson gambit would be such a big risk but also i am trying to think how will that position come because you are going to play bishop c5 here he has no way to get this opening like castles and then you can instead of knight f6 which allows e5 you go d6 mm, that's the point okay uh if you have any question
can do you have any questions let's see uh, e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 d4 bishop c4 can black go pawn h6 says harsh pandit well harsh why do you want to play a passive move like h6 what will you get from that you know it's very he will just castle and he will be ahead in development why don't you develop your own piece with bishop c5 by the way here is a very famous game which is one of the most famous videos online with knight g5 draw offer if you play against magnus carlsen this is the famous one vidit versus carlsen uh knight g5 he offered a draw and then his stomach was upset and he he uh, left the tournament hall uh, knight h6 is the main move here and then after takes takes bishop takes king takes queen h5 uh, you play g6 queen into c5 uh, d6 and i think black has a as a fine position no problem okay now if your opponent plays e4 e5 bishop c knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 bishop c5 d4 then you just take the pawn and now if he plays c3 we have seen that if he castles you go d6 don't play knight f6 because it allows e5 d6 and now if he goes c3 uh, no point in taking the pawn which seems okay but i would recommend bishop to g4 nice move pinning the knight and here we have a, a, a game by uh, amin basim who, who visited our channel and he played bishop into f3 bishop into f7 king f8 g into f3 and here a simple move is knight f6 and i already start to feel like black is doing okay pretty well in this position uh if the bishop goes back then you could think of playing queen e8 to g6 like queen e8 is a nice move and i like i like black's position here Okay, uh, Dibankar Burman, Dibakar Burman says Latvian Gambit. I think it's e4, e5, and f3, f5, right? Uh, we'll have a look at it later. So c3 looks like the main move, and c3 comes with its own uh, set of problems and everything. Uh, if you take on c3. it would not be a good move because not because of queen d5 which is met with queen e7 with an advantage to black but bishop into f7 king into f7 and queen d5 check okay king f8 queen into c5 and now uh, already i think white is doing much better in this position so don't take what's the move that you should play here black to move can anyone tell me so that we are keeping in touch with our repertoire black to play what should black play in this position uh not d6 akshay mohan i think after castles d6 is what i recommended but if you play c3 d6 then after c d4 white is just better yeah ilam parthi knight f6 very good anish god say very good knight f6 so guys you are uh, a little bit confused between bishop c4 bishop c5 d4 e d4 castles here i am recommending d6 but not to c3 because to c3 if you play d6 that would mean that after cd4 white has a clear advantage in the center with these nice pawns 
So the reason why I'm recommending knight f6 is that I want to play actively. Now if you take on d4, I'm going to give you a check. Okay. And black, white has three moves here. Uh, one is knight d2. Other one is bishop d2. And the last one is knight, in, knight to c3. Now if he goes bishop d2, which is the main move, then I think uh, what you should do is take knight takes and play d5. And this would lead to equal position after knight d5, queen b3, knight a5 check, queen a4, knight c6, queen b3, and you can uh, agree to a draw. Yeah, this is just a draw. Uh, if you want to keep fighting, maybe bishop e6 can be considered or also knight c e7. You can consider this move. It's not like a bad move or anything. But with black, if you are equalizing, there's nothing wrong, you know, like to get such an, such an equal game. Dev Marcia says after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, knight g5. Yeah, yeah. Dev, I think this comes under not an opening that we are covering, but I'll still have a look at it. Uh, what he is suggesting is after knight f3, instead of bishop c5, if we go knight f6, knight g5, uh, d5, ed, knight a5, because if you take knight into d5, then d4 is very strong d4 ed knight f7 and i think white gets uh ah maybe castles first not knight f7 castles and white gets a good position but uh first knight a5 bishop b5 check c6 takes takes queen f3 this is what dev marcia is asking dev i believe that bishop e7 is a very good move here you can give up another pawn takes takes bishop d7 and just castle and for two pawns you have brilliant development white king is still in the center all his pieces are inside and this should be fine yeah okay uh, some people are suggesting traxler is the best here so if knight g5 you go bishop c5 um uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think that this is a crazy line uh, because after knight f7 you want to take bishop f2. This is just something which you should really take care while preparing. Computers give something around equal at the depth of 60 or something. I have let's check engine where I checked and uh, it was giving around even position. So it's sound but you need to know so many different things. Uh, it's it's really an interesting way to play. Okay, let's uh, check something more here. Uh, so we were looking at bishop c5 and then if opponent plays d4, you take and to castles. Just I'm going to ask you guys one more. What's the best move for black? I want you to learn everything and go back home. You know, not like I've taught everything and then you forget. If he castles, what do you do? Uh, John Wong says bishop f7 instead of knight f7. I think we, we can, you can just check that out. What is needed to be done? I, I'm not sure. I haven't looked at it in depth. But I think there is some way in which black uh, responds to that as well. Yeah, d6, exactly. d6 is, uh, is a good move here and I like it. The, the only reason why knight f6 I, I dislike and maybe I may be wrong, you can correct me, is because of e5, d5, e into f6, d into c4 fg7 rook g8 rook e1 and bg5 i think this line is something i'm not sure about i did study it a lot but i couldn't find much 
So therefore I want to play d6. Now if your opponent plays c3, what's the move here? Can anyone tell me what's the move to c3? If white plays c3, what do you do? So castle is d6, but c3 means not d6 because cd4. Yes, knight f6, Anudeep, Ryan Rajesh, very good. Anish Godse, excellent. Akshay Mohan, Abhilash Jos, all it attentive people. Knight Nihilesh, Vimal Vijayan, Leo Chess World, Ilam Parthi, uh, Girish Bachikar, Nishchal Tala, Adil Shah, Adil knight f6, not knight f3. Amai Kanitkar, very good guys. You are attentive and so that's good. There are many over here who are just spamming the chat just like that. And I am grateful that we have moderators here who are taking care of that. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, knight f6 is the, is the best move here. And now white has two ways to play. One is cd4 as we just looked at right now. Uh, which we saw you give a check and we just saw bd2 takes takes and d5 this is what i recommend knight d5 and there are so many grandmaster draws in this line like they come to the board and then they just but every draw in just a few moves in the opening is a victory for black and not for white white has a responsibility to play for a win in any case if you are trying to play for a win on your own then knight c e7 is not uh, a draw you can continue playing and also uh, bishop e6 is something that i was thinking could be possible it's very complicated after uh, queen into b7 nd b4 you can study this if you like you know it's possible to play the other move here after bishop b4 uh, is to play knight d2 and here um, I think you can just take on e4 <coughs> and the main line goes d5 if your opponent castles in such a position then I, I don't really see too many issues like you can take on d2 bishop d2 bishop d2 queen d2 and um, well knight e7 seems like a nice move next move I'll go castles and if you play d5 trying to play d6 i will just play d6 and next move castle and i'm a pawn up although white has some space i think white black is better so knight e4 i think the main move is d5 and here uh, knight e7 castles knight into d2 bishop d2 bishop d2 and important move for white is d6 if white doesn't play d6 and he takes on d2 then after d6 black is better so d6 cd queen d2 and castles and i think if only side who could be even slightly better here is black but actually it's around it's completely equal because first of all white will win this pawn and then to complete his development black will have to give up another pawn and then it would be equal bishop versus knight but not a draw yeah uh yash kucheria you always miss my super chat but i am still big fan well yash i'm sorry for all the times i've missed your super chat but thank you so much for sending it right now <coughs> b6 says i think uh, this question why not b6 if castles doesn't make any sense no line would the move b6 be a good one guys if you want to suggest a move please write the moves from the start so that i understand not just one move because there's so many lines we are looking at uh, it's not i think we can put few of the people out who are uh, just 
constantly spamming the chat not letting me see good good comments those who really need help suvinay goel, goel says can you please touch on the two knights main line with knight f5 yeah suvinay my recommendation is bishop c5 uh not knight f6 but okay if we get some time at the end of it i will have a look at Uh, Amai Kanitkar says, why not bishop d5 instead of repetition? Uh, you mean in this position, c3, knight f6, cd, bishop b4, bd2, bd2, knight d2, d5, takes queen b3, knight a5. Well, here you can't play bishop d5 because you lose the queen. And here if you take on d5, then after queen d5, I feel black is already slightly better like castles I can play uh, castles here and and I like black's position you know the bishop is very very well placed and should be okay yes uh, please like the video everyone I think what is it we have 389 likes let's try to get to 500 that would be nice okay let's go back and see if in this position if you play knight to c3 here then i would say just take the pawn knight e4 and now my idea is to play d5 so opponent will castle and now bishop into c3 this is a good move because not knight into c3 he takes back with the pawn and somehow this bishop is misplaced if you take on c3 i have ideas like queen b3 or bishop into f7 followed by queen b3 winning that bishop so instead of that you take with the bishop if he takes bc then after d5 black is clearly better in this position next move is castling hence what is white's move to keep the game going this is an interesting pawn sacrifice line what is how does white keep the game going here ilam party yes this is the next line which we will look at what you suggest white to move how does he keep the the position interesting why not pawn e5 after d4 white's point of view when ah yes that's that's what we are going to look at as well we look at that Yash Kucheria says, 5 o'clock, maza aega, shout out, tabibi dena or abhi. Yash, uh, at 5 o'clock, yes, there is, a, there is a game on Vidit's channel. I think it's Vidit, me, Samai, Biswa. Going to play Bug House. I'm pretty bad at that, but yeah, it'll be fun. Okay. Uh, d5 is what everyone suggests yes yash bharadia you are absolutely right pranav jujare anish god say rook e1 is not possible anish just bishop into e1 um, d5 is the move which is very very interesting in this position uh, and you will see that it's crazy position white is a pawn down piece down but he attacks another pawn he has the eyes on this piece it's complicated but if you know how to play then it shouldn't be a big issue by the way asanga asks apart from buying stuff from your shop how can we support you do you actually make any money from youtube you deserve support and help asanga there are several ways you can support yes buying from the shop would be nice uh, just uh, super chat or uh, there is a google pay link there, there are several ways in which you can support us if you enjoy in fact, uh, I must shout, give a shout out to uh, 
yesterday uh, there was someone who who paid in google pay uh, i forget the name uh, i had checked it yeah amit soman who's been contributing several times for these sessions on google pay and says he enjoys it and he gives it as uh, he 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 donates money for uh these live sessions he enjoys and learns from them by the way we also have chess base india foundation so if any of you would like to contribute towards that then we can make sure that that money goes to someone who is a deserving uh and in financial need chess player so you can also support via that okay now uh d5 i would recommend knight e5 here and then uh, the main move is b into c3 here although queen e2 is also possible and then you can just castle and leads to interesting i mean slightly better positions for black but if you play b into c3 i take knight c4 then comes queen d4 and here I want you to tell me what would you play here as black black to move find black's best move here black to move Brian Tafara thank you so much for joining in live Yeah, Mayur. Yes, why is in trouble? So D five. This is old line. Uh, no one plays it anymore because it's kind of refuted. You mean th there's not much that white can do if black plays accurately. But you know there are all these little traps. Yes, very good, very good. All those who said castles, excellent. All those who said who are greedy and want to keep uh, an extra piece, not a good idea with N C D six because after take on G seven, Queen F six, take here. knight takes check already it's a very dangerous position uh, if you play king f8 i'll go bishop h6 king g8 now rook e5 with the idea of mate look at your pieces all hemmed in while white is going to just win uh, in this position so be careful be careful for against trying to keep hold of a lot of material as vidit rightly said yesterday the biggest advantage of having extra material is that you can give up at any point so castle and then after something like queen e4 you just play knight d6 and next uh, you can develop your bishop at some point move the knight away say rook e8 if possible knight f5 d6 or maybe sometimes b6 bb7 and i think black has no problems in fact black is better so that's the reason why uh, here cd4 bishop b4 check in almost all lines black either turns up equal or gets a better position i think the best line is bishop d2 then you take knight d2 and then d5 yeah for both side i mean for white this might be the best he can get okay so <clears throat> moving on ed4 uh we looked at this and then after c3 we looked at knight f6 and here as we said c into d4 was already checked with bishop b4 check and now the move that we want to look at is e5 and here it's a different story now you play d5 and always remember in such openings e5 should be met with d5 if you are going to move the knight you will be in trouble like for example if you play knight g4 i take cd4 suddenly everything is just horrible for black like now knight bishop b4 check i can play knight c3 and uh, white is just better so d5 and now the main move is bishop b5 e into f6 like like max lange doesn't work because pawn is not on c2 and white has not castled white king is still in the center and pawn is on oops pawn is on uh, c3 so in this position e into f6 will be met with d into c4 
uh, and f into g7 rook g8 and let's say now if you try to castle then i think bishop e6 and i'm just <coughs> doing much better bishop g5 i can now play uh, even bishop e7 is okay take queen takes knight d4 uh, maybe just long castle the basic fact that this knight cannot develop to c3 there is a pawn all of this leads to a very good advantage for black even you know a position like this where there are so many weaknesses black is better because of his peace activity look at this rook can jump in queen can come here threaten a mate and so this is good position for black mm. so d5 white must play bishop b5 this is the main move and now i jump with knight e4 takes bishop b6 this time playing bishop b4 check is not such a great idea because after bd2 let's say you take on d2 knight takes d2 somehow these pawns give white an advantage so i am going to play bishop b6 and i'm going to put pressure on these pawn on this pawn so uh, white goes knight c3 now castles bishop e3 bg4 good move developing with the tempo h3 bishop h5 uh, i don't want to take on f3 because yes queen f3 would be good d4 is hanging but the problem is you will take g f3 and after knight c3 b c3 somehow this center is very strong for white and next he will play f4 so what i do is bishop h5 and now after queen c2 i take on c3 b c3 and here i want you to find a very good move for black let's see only move for black to get a good position how many of you can find this Thank you Abhishek Singh for just coming in the middle of your work to like this stream. Thank you. Yes, Atul, we will talk about French. Yeah. By the way, we have 484 likes, very close to 500. Nice. Black to move. What should black play here? very good ilamparthi satvik uh, pranav shivendra excellent guys absolutely alert kushal chess s murugan nihilesh anish pranav mahima chauhan Ak akshay mohan nishchal neev patel nice nice Bujar Fetiu Nice. So the right move is F6. Breaking the center at the right moment and after E into F6, just taking back with the queen. And this position is very good. You know, many times you would like to take on F3, but after this and playing F6, the point is F4 just keeps this center so strong for white but when you break directly f6 he has no option but to take because otherwise you will take on f3 and then take on e5 and just ruin his structure so take take and i think black is just doing much much uh, better you know in this position black is doing very well this is aronian versus anand uh, bishop e2 was played in that game and you can check out this game at uh, uh, Anand beat Aronian with some good, very nice uh, ideas. Uh, here, Bishop G6 was played, but there is also possibility of going Knight A5 with the idea of putting maybe Knight looking at C4. And it's, it's a good position for black. Okay. So that kind of covers early D4 ideas from after Bishop C5 the so we looked at b4 and we also looked at d4 now i'm going to look at castles you know in this position and to castles i'm going to play knight to f6 and here 
tomorrow we will look at slow lines with d3 or uh, yeah slow lines with d3 but what if we place d4 now this uh, all brings us again you will be like oh very confusing he's playing d4 on every other move what do you think is the best move in this position for black black to move Uh, Asanga, if he pushes the pawn to e6, I think the pawn would be too weak. Uh, I didn't check, but let me just see what happens if he pushes the pawn to e6 in that position after f6 here. Let's say he goes e6. I have a feeling like you can just play uh, queen e8. And I don't see how he will defend uh, this pawn. Yeah, so... Castles, knight f6 and now d4. This is what we are looking at. Let me see if what's your solution here. Yeah, very smart guys. Everyone says Sriyana Malya. Well done. Bishop into d4. Anish Godse. Ilam Parthi. Pranav Jujare. Yeah, ed4 here is also a very viable move. But then once again, you need to be ready for e5. d5 e into f6 and this line in the max lunge if you can work this out by all means go ahead and play this it shouldn't be so bad but uh, yeah i'm taking with the bishop here the reason why i can't take with the knight is because of knight into e5 so i take with the bishop and here is uh, an interesting story actually i i think this line has been used several times uh, by many good players with uh, white pieces but it's not so good uh, because after takes takes it seems like black has just won a pawn even white was not successful in opening up the position for example if you play c3 I just go back and then next move I will castle perhaps or even just play d6 bishop e6 but the, the point uh, behind this entire thing is that White wants to play f4 and uses two bishops to open up the position. And this is the main, main idea. I'm going to play d6 now. fe, de. And now comes the main move, bishop g5. Uh, I remember there was this Bhopal open in 2018 or 19. 19, I think. And there's this player, uh, his name is... White was, uh, black was Alexandro Alexi, who is a very strong GM. And I think white was, uh, what's his name? Sai Baswant, 1900 player. And Baswant managed to beat Alexandro with the white pieces from this opening. So it's not a very trivial opening. Uh, but. I think black is just doing very well if he knows what how to continue so the right way to continue here is queen to e7 just simple queen e7 and there are two main moves in this position one is c3 and another one is knight a3 now Gukesh Seeing that Sai Baswant had beaten Alexandrov, went for the move c3 against Alexandrov. But c3 is a bad move and I think uh, Alexandrov didn't play well. He actually continued with the move bishop e6 here, which allowed Gukesh to equalize after knight a3. And this is an interesting position. But here black has a very strong move. Can anyone find it black to move? c3 is an inaccurate move by white how should black continue black to move what should you play One move leads to big advantage for black. 
yes anish god say very good uh, shriana queen c5 is a possible move but after cd4 queen c4 uh, knight a3 white gets lot of play you need to be careful not to allow white to get lot of initiative so yeah pranav kite you are right nishchal tala you are right mayur gondalekar very good queen c5 looks interesting but after cd4 queen c4 knight a3 i am already feeling that black is lagging behind in development in a big way and like ideas like knight b5 or even e5 they all look very scary to me right now you know in this position so knight b5 maybe and so better is to just come back 96 very strong move and i think if alexandro would have played this he would have got a near nearly decisive advantage uh, and and uh, he did play against subhayan kundu uh, later on so and he won that game usually white will take on f6 if he goes bishop h4 it really doesn't make any sense because you lose a piece queen in queen c5 so you take on f6 here uh and now g f6 now threatening queen c5 check so let's say knight a3 uh and my many ways to play but i think bishop d7 with the idea of long castle just gives black such a such a great position out of the opening you are black you are pawn up you have everything under control rook g8 is coming up if i was white i would never play this system okay c3 uh but knight a3 makes more sense here because you are defending this bishop and developing a piece and here uh, i want to ask all of you uh what is a good move for black if someone finds this move i will be impressed not easy not easy black to move how should black continue here yeah everybody watching this please like the stream i hope we reached 500 yeah we have 559 likes fantastic let's try for 600 ilam parthi bishop e6 then c3 then you have to think oh should i take here okay knight takes then you go back it's possible you know to play this way but instead of i mean bishop c4 there is a powerful move bishop f6 first intermediate gf6 knight c4 and then you know this is exactly what white is looking for knight e3 next then making use of these squares so not bishop e6 think about it i want to see if someone gets a good move here let's see if anyone got it the move that i'm looking for it's very very unique No 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 one no one no one Wow first time no one in the chat found this move black to move I'm so happy so proud of myself No 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 one yet Oh wow everyone wants to play bg4 but i think bg4 is just uh, not very accurate i think if you go bishop g4 then i'll just take queen into g4 uh, and after knight g4 bishop e7 and then f7 is hanging and too much problems yes saket kumar i think is the only one who's found this very good saket good job atul tripathi is there yes very good atul Ryan Rajesh okay yeah well the move here is rook to g8 and uh, the idea looks very unusual but the point is that this bishop is anyway misplaced here wants wants to take here and after gf6 the rook will open up itself against the rook, uh, against the king and say i'll i'll just show you some sample lines for example c3 knight e6 takes takes and we have a very nice open line for the rook dimzo which would be proud of this idea 
uh, and if let's say here you play uh, king h1 then bd7 queen e1 a6 queen f2 knight e6 takes takes and once again the rook on the open file is just very well placed you know the knight can come to c5 d4 by the way i must thank erwin lemmy who has made some beautiful dvds on this system uh from black and i did take a bit of analysis from there so thank you erwin for for this and this idea of rook g8 uh, i think if anyone wants to get this get these dvds uh i will put the link in the description later and you can get them ah s murugan said you also found it okay murugan good job then i think uh, that just about covers every possible line i don't know if i missed something let me just check my analysis um yeah yeah i think i covered almost everything yes saket you are absolutely right rook g6 can come after rook g8 and very good this was i think covering everything so just to recap very quickly b4 was the ivan's gambit you just take it uh, after b4 take the pawn c3 just come back uh, d4 play d6 queen b3 play queen d7 put your bishop back threaten knight a5 uh, then later on decide whether you want to play knight f6 knight e7 if he takes on e5 don't be too greedy and take back on e5 which allows the open d file and open bishop diagonal just try to look at how you can finish your development and then take advantage of certain weaknesses in white's position look at the game safarli versus nihal okay uh, against the move d4 i recommend taking with the pawn and then two moves for white one is c3 other one is castles to castles i recommend d6 here we looked at a game of amin basem with the move bishop g4 i think it's a good move gives good position if white plays c3 instead of castle you play the move knight f6 and now there are two moves for white one is to take on d4 when you go bishop b4 check three moves for white bd2 uh you just take take and play d5 another one is knight d2 where you can take on e4 and uh th this leads to again equalish position the last one is knight c3 which is complex but is bad because after bishop c3 d5 has to be played and knight e5 takes and castles when here i think black is doing very well uh here so that's the reason why cd4 uh is one move the other one is e5 here we have the very famous game aronian anand where we go d5 from tata steel uh, knight e4 cd bishop b6 we don't want to play bishop b4 because after bd2 you can't hit on these pawns i'm playing bishop b6 with the hope that later on i can castle put my bishop on g4 and break with f6 okay so this con concludes kind of the move d4 over here uh the next thing that we can look at is the move uh castles i recommend knight f6 and to d4 we are going to look at uh, going to play bishop d4 knight d4 knight d4 f4 d6 fe de bishop g5 queen e7 important move c3 you play knight e6 back which is better for you and if knight a3 comes a very strong move that none of you got almost few of you got it rook g8 and i was i think black has a nice position <clears throat> over here um tomorrow we'll cover lines with just simple move d3 where you go knight f6 maybe white castles maybe white plays c3 it's a positional game there are so many nice games here but today was the day of gambits and i think i kind of gave you a complete repertoire against how to play against these gambits i hope you enjoyed it uh if if instead of f4 you play bishop g5 in the last game then i don't see uh you getting too much compensation king man so not not great 
okay that just about covers everything i have to rush now at five o'clock i have another stream with with it but anyway we covered everything if you enjoyed this video hit the like button and subscribe to chess base india i'll be putting up the links of erwin lamy's dvds in the description so if you want to further uh, solidify your knowledge then go for it okay guys thank you so much by the way the timing usually will be at around two three or four just stay in touch with the stream there are a lot of things going on right now tomorrow we have the chess base india sale as well so stay in touch for that yeah tomorrow and day after big chess base india mid-year sale more on that later take care bye bye